I'd be happy to. Uh, Kurt's been a uh, member of our club for some time. He joined uh, in 1998. He was past president 2009. He's a Paul Harris plus nine. Our club wasn't the first club he belonged to. I'm not sh sure which others he belonged to, but he can probably tell us. Uh, he uh, was the town manager in Royal City, Washington from 1979 to 1981. Now, all of us Cougs for sure know where that is because we drive right through there and hope we don't get a ticket. Uh, he's been involved in uh, the, as an artist for over 40 years and He's a graduate or he attended at least cent Central Washington uh, University, which explains sort of why how he ended up in Royal City. So uh, welcome, uh, Kurt. Uh, it's all yours. Thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, Arlington was my first club, but my dad uh, was uh, in the Honolulu Club for very many years. So I'm a legacy. Uh, and I am uh, was been in Arlington for uh, over 20 years. Uh, so, welcome to this infomercial for Kurt McVeigh Art Glass. Uh, I am going to uh, do a slideshow, and uh, before I start, I'm going to set up the first slide as a public service uh, announcement. Uh, and the we have had a exchange student from Finland and I just learned something recently about uh, why they are so ecologically sound uh, in their policies. And it has to do with a mythological figure that they have called the earth protector. So I'm gonna try to get uh, this uh, share thing going and set up here it is. Present. Now the, the earth protector is something that the, the Finnish people tell their children about. Uh, he's a nice, he's a warm and fuzzy guy that comes and visits you at the appropriate time. Okay, here he is. So uh, the earth protector lives in the forest and uh, he will come and visit you if you do something that he doesn't like to the earth. Now, I think they invented Santa Claus too, but it, this, is, uh, this is kind of working out for them. Uh, and uh, it seems like something that uh, we could adopt uh, to ensure that future generations respect the earth because the earth protector might come and get you. End of infomercial, I mean, uh, public service amounts. Uh, this uh, title of this slide is uh, how, how to Succeed in Art. You, uh, it's, a, it's a tough game. And uh, the interesting uh, story is uh, as an artist, you don't want to have a home run hit. Uh, in something that you produce because the uh, Chinese or, you know, some other giant chain will come and copy you. When I was doing uh, trade shows, uh, they were spot, they were spies and anybody that, uh, that I met unstable in connection uh, that uh, had something really, really good got ripped off by uh, department stores. Uh, and also this reminds me that I grew up in Hawaii and um, in Hawaii, all you need for a wardrobe is a pair of shorts. And, uh, and until you go to school, then they make you wear a shirt. And I wore flip flops all the way through high school. And this is what I gave up to move to Arlington. So Kurt McVeigh Art Glass is um, located in Arlington. And uh, I've been doing this for 40 years and it's been a lot of fun. 
my inspiration. Uh, when I was about five years old, I did light my finger on fire when I was playing with a candle and a, a candle wick landed on my finger. And uh, I guess once the fire fights you, you, you don't give up. But um, luckily my dad was there and he, he blew it out, but I still have the scar. And these guys are, of course, everybody's favorite uh, nitwits, of which I am a proud member. This is the inside of the barn. This is what you see when you come up the stairs. Uh, and by the way, uh, I'm going to start this presentation in the middle and work my way around to the middle again. Uh, so here is what I came to talk about. These are the vases, the new vases that I make. On the left, uh, there is a giant flat piece of glass that is sitting on top of a metal cylinder next to the glove, and it is ready to be shaped into the vase on the right. So you heat that up and it falls down, hopefully where you want it. And uh, that, that's how these are made. The, that's the final shaping process. You can see the piece of glass you start with is pretty huge. That's the inches long and almost 30 inches wide. You, this is the piece that goes into the uh, slumping process, but this is what it looks like uh, before it is gone through its first melting. This is a two foot square piece of glass. It is covered with uh, crushed uh, colored glass, enamel powders, and and uh, other decorations uh, made from glass. So this is all glass and uh, it is uh, sort, of, sort of like a painting, very much like painting, which is why I really enjoy this process. Uh, these are the glass uh, contain the containers of the crushed glass, all kinds of different colors, all kinds of different sizes. And uh, the, these are the decorations that I make. Uh, the decorations start off with the, uh, that, that cube or, or the that piece, the, layer, the stacked piece of colored glass up above. You heat that up in a flame and uh, you roll it and pull it out until you get the long cylindrical uh, pieces that you see below it. Uh, and those are, can be chopped up into short, shorter sections and also chopped up into cross sections. Uh, those little round things. And those uh, are what I use to decorate, to add decoration to the plain powdered glasses. So uh, that's, the end of the story. Um, this is back to the beginning. These are the raw materials. These are sheets of glass that were made in Portland and they are about 30 some inches long and about 20 inches wide. And that's the raw material, all kinds of different colors. And uh, that's what is used. Okay, there's my studio. My barn is uh, an Arlington dairy barn that was built in 1929, so it's almost 100 years old. And uh, I got here in 1994. It's 4,000 square feet on a floor for a total of 12,000 square feet. And it uh, is built against the hillside, so it's ground floor in the back as well as in the front. Uh, and uh, it's uh, like a giant ship 
but this is what it looked like with the old siding and with cedar shingle, uh, barn shingles on the roof. Uh, and this is the interior uh, when I got there. And um, you, can, you know, the construction you can see is pretty stout. Uh, and um, at the time they had taken the windows out, uh, luckily. So uh, this is what it looks like now. Oh. Right. That's what is on the internet as to what is here. That is actually a firework stand at Hamahama, one of my favorite pictures. Now, this is what the barn looks like now. It's got a uh, new siding on it and a new metal roof. Let's see, there's actually a rainbow over the top of it if you look closely. Uh, there's an aerial view from uh, my um, 60 foot man left. You can see we're right on the edge of the tree farm, forest, wilderness. Um, which uh, the foothills of Washington is absolutely the most beautiful place I've ever seen since Hawaii. And a heck of a place to live. Uh, this is uh, on the left, you see downstairs, storage area, and on the right is the hayloft, the upstairs, gigantic spaces. Uh, and those, uh, those rafters there are 33 foot long, two by sixes to um, old growth for that be pretty hard to come by now. I did put in some skylights because it was kind of dark up there, so it's pretty cool up there now. That's where I'm going to build my tiki bar. Uh, this is an example of uh, the like 12 inch square beams this thing is made out of um, and um, all the wiring that I put in, which is all in conduit because I was afraid the rats would chew, all, chew it up and burn the place down. Um, I also put in a complete sprinkler system uh, because I was, Jim Minifee wouldn't ensure the place because I had fire making ovens in a old wooden building. Uh, so I am definitely self-insured and self-sprinkler. I also have lots of rhododendrons that I inherited from a farm down the road that uh, closed. And there are, so that, that's something that I always wanted. And I got them, they're like twice as tall now. And there's an orchard that, I, that was here. Then when I got on the property, uh, I got everything. Um, and uh, so if you need apples, come by. If you want to see rhododendrons, come by in May. Inside the barn, uh, it's kind of what it looks like now. The Fusing is a 5,000 year old process that's 3,000 years older than glass blowing. Uh, it involves multiple stages. This is the first stage uh, uh, with ovens that I built myself. Uh, you heat glass up, melt it into a new piece of glass, and then it comes out flat. That's what it looks like on the inside. Got electrical, it's all electrical, it's all computer controlled. The process is cutting and layering glass. There's some cut and layered glass ready to go into the fusers. There's glass uh, in the fusers coming, you know, being fired, come out flat. This is the shaping area where after the glass is cooled, you put it into molds and heat it up enough for gravity to pull it into the mold. And you can, in these ovens, you can stack them uh, up in the dozens. 
And this is a lower temperature firing, only a couple hundred degrees lower uh, at, at about 1200 instead of 1400. Um, so I don't have to melt glass until it's liquid. I, I just kind of bond it and then shape it. These are all the molds that I use. They are uh, made from castable refractory cement, uh, which is also used for underwater cement, but it takes high temperatures and it can be used over and over again. And I have uh, hundreds and hundreds of these. So because I often used to get orders where they needed a lot of pieces quick, uh, particularly corporate orders like from Bank of America or places that needed uh, uh, lots of uh, gifts for employees or clients, and it still occurs. Um, there's stacks and stacks of uh, products because um, when I make stuff, I make them in batch. So there's always extra leftover for people that need it at the last minute. Uh, and also, this is uh, leftover from a time when I had 10 employees and I shipped all over the world. Uh, and the, uh, this is still plenty left for anybody that wants me. This is a trade show booth um, in Philadelphia. Uh, I've done over 50 trade shows for it, almost all on the East Coast, New York gift show, Philadelphia, oh, um, oh, lots of them. And that's where I used to get all my orders, wholesale to galleries. And uh, that's how uh, I wound up with 10 employees and shipping class all over the world. Now I'm gonna show you some examples of stuff that I've made. And uh, glass, uh, this fused glass is made <clears throat> with materials that uh, are manufactured in Portland, Oregon, and they are all chemically engineered to melt different colors together. This uh, is a Christmas gift that was used by the ambassador from for Korea, the US ambassador for Korea, uh, a couple of Christmases ago. Um, it's, it's, it's an example of what happens when you put a piece of clear glass over a piece of iridized glass. The iridized uh, surface is created by uh, at the factory where, where I get my glass by spraying uh, tin, tin oxide spray. And uh, it just turns into all these wild colors. And in fact, tin, ox, tin oxide, stannous chloride, Stannous chloride is sprayed on uh, things like mayonnaise jars and uh, ball jars, catch bottles, things like that to make the glass stronger. Uh, so any of my glass that has the, is sprayed on there uh, is, is stronger than glass without it. Uh, window glasses actually has that sprayed on it too or has a coating on it. There's a bowl, it's a 16 inch bowl. Um, again, you just, the, the uh, combinations of uh, layering glass, these different types of glass, you get bubbles, those are bubbles, um, uh, because there's just different layers of glass on top of each other that uh, interact uh, in an uh, interesting way. And I'm pretty good at adding little decorations that um, are subtle enough to make things pop. Okay, restaurants love my stuff because they're practically indestructible, also because of that tin coating, but uh, most restaurant wear uh, 
is destroyed within a year. My uh, works indefinitely. I'm still producing pieces for Anthony's Pure 69, uh, but in the past I have done lots of other uh, restaurants. Um, and uh, oh, we get some write-ups here. Been at this for 40 years, so you you score a few now and then. I even made it to the tamale book. Love tamales. They didn't ask me for credits, but that's okay. Oh, this is um, the intermission. Most of my work now is corporate awards. And so the, a lot of them were or Boeing, when they give somebody an airplane, they also often give them a perfect air bus. And I do my own engraving on a laser engraver, which is not fun. That's metal flake blue glass. Interesting to be able to buy a glass that has a metal plate. You know what? Uh, here's you know, different ways of layering and coloring glass. And the only regret I have is that there's not been a cougar yet that has bought one of these. What? What? Yeah. Okay, that's a cougar challenge. Uh, these are business gifts. Uh, they're just, they're meant to stand up and put in a window or on a shelf. Uh, I do a lot of these um, and engrave them. So if you need something like that, those, you know, like run about 40 bucks. Microsoft, Arlington School District, Weyer Hazer, R.J. Reynolds Cigar Tray. This is dichroic glass that's been etched and layered into a piece. You can just you can do anything basically. Um. Yep. That's how those half rounds stand up. Well, over we here, there was a chandelier and a, um, a mural here up at the high school. Uh, I have to admit that, you know, uh, this, this was a, a fun job and, um, Pretty cool. I had a lot of help with this. A lot of people helped me design the uh, fixtures and the, the hanging stuff. And it is kind of bizarre. And it's the donor wall. Use my laser to make all the names. Lighting fixtures. This is uh, some pictures from uh, a hotel in, in uh, Waikiki, the W Hotel. Go upstairs into the bar. Uh, I made those lighting fixtures. And on the right is uh, when I made it to television on the Survivors TV show. Uh, more awards. 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 This is for the Raleigh 
bicycle company. This is their logo. Nobody knows about. Different ways to use these glass. That is green metal flake, one of my favorites. That is green fish. And it's made with powdered glass, but there's layers of uh, glass involved. And you can scrape away the powdered glass. There's just a lot of things you My new vases are groundbreaking and uh, un unusual. They incorporate a whole lot of different techniques from 40 years of experience, glass blowing techniques and uh, glass fusing techniques, technology uh, that um, you know, it really started in the scouts and my use of tools, and knowledge of using your hands and uh, then in stage crew using tools. Uh, I make all my own everything except the glass that I buy. So these vases, uh, are evolving. Um, some of them are pretty, the first ones are pretty crude, do a little lopsided, uh, strange colors. Uh, I have always been afraid of colors. And uh, this has been a great awakening for me to, to really be able to experiment uh, with the use of color. Um, and the results have been look very fortunate, very spectacular. There's nobody in the world that's doing anything close to this on the scale with this depth of knowledge of decoration uh, and I think style. It is so much fun to, to uh, get into this minutia of how these different glass colors and glass chip sizes work together from powder all the way up to, you know, like giant chunks and how, how they juxtapose. I think this is Yola's base and I have very mixed feelings about putting flowers in these things. That's my base. This, uh, you know, they, they look spectacular, but um, I don't know, man. Can't fight progress. Here's some more uh, colors of, uh, you know, the chips of glass that are cut up uh, or crushed colors of glass. That's what it looks like when you start. It doesn't look like much. Uh, and you have to really experiment with it. Try it over and over and over again. Uh, and man, it's, it's fun. Okay, so uh, these are like the flat pieces. This is what, what they look like when you, on the left is the powdered stage or the crushed glass stage. That's the before it's been used. On the right, yeah, um, I, it's melted. And, you know, some of the colors change a little bit. And it's important for me to uh, melt it only to the point where uh, there's, a, there's, there's still a lot of texture, lumpiness on there. So unlike most of the glass that I've made before that uh, is very kind of geometric and linear, uh, I am now 
able to, uh, um, you know, screw around. I, uh, yeah. some, sometimes I don't even want to make these into bases. Dave, you're moving around a lot. <laughs> Just saying. Um, okay. Am I, am I over time? You're, you're fine, Kurt. There's going to be some questions, I'm sure, though. You've got about okay. nine minutes. All right, so um, one, one of my plans is that uh, I like to make two at a time, one side by side. And, uh, you know, that helps my knowledge, but it also, you know, I'm hoping to sell matched pairs. Uh, a lot of my inspiration does come from uh, cosmic photography. This is a, lame, a recent one, you know, this is like, Aurora Borealis on Jupiter. Jupiter is pretty cool. There is Jupiter, Jupiter with Aurora Borealis on the, over the top of it. There's. Are you talking to me? Oh, sorry. No. Okay. Uh, all right. So there's a before picture of uh, a flat piece of glass that's sitting. Uh, on top of a metal cylinder ready to be shaped. There's what it came out like. So how fun is that? Before and after. Uh, bunches of experiments, you know, I not crazy about the yellow ones, but that was my starting point. Uh, I don't know why. Some detailed close-ups of uh, how the how the glass and enamels work out. You know, you can I can spend hours just gazing into these. Things. Yola, how did that work out for you? I still spend hours gazing into it. My husband does too. I All the pieces, you, they're all so unique. And every angle that you look at the vase is unique. Yeah, I, you're insane uh, examples of what glass can uh, do evoke uh, display. It's amazing. Like on the right side there, there's uh, a new product that is uh, the dichroic glass that is uh, made into powder and you can sprinkle it along like a powder and it's the pink stuff that is in the lower left. It looks like marbles. Kurt, I think we've got some internet connections problems with you. You want to switch over? Are we done? Not getting this? I, th I think we're fine. We're about out of time. Okay. Uh, I'm going to blast through these. This is what happens when everything goes wrong. And uh, I am open for business. Table wares, cheap. Basis, 450. Stop by the danger zone. 
We'll have a blast. Uh, and you can get me at my uh, website. Okay, all done. Kurt? That's me. Um, I just wanted to reflect, you were starting to talk about how uh, the colors have come into you through the bases. Even through a lot of the uh, wards and things, I started seeing a lot more color that you had put into your work in the last few years. It's just vibrant and it's fun to watch. When can we come play? Vicki, you need some more glass. Exactly what she, that's exactly what she just said. That's exactly what I just said. I said, I need to come and play and look. And when are you going to open up for playing with friends? Or, yeah, anytime. Yeah, I'll go with you, Vicki. All right, let's go. Yeah. I'm afraid it'll be a herd. Hey, Kurt, a couple of a few weeks ago, we had uh, Jay, uh, James Madison from the Tulalip tribe was showing us his art, and there was a a piece that he has at Cabela's that had some fused glass in it. And his comment was he had to find somebody in Everett. And I think he ended up buying a furnace for the guy and all sorts of other things. And of course, I, I like other members of our club thought instantly of you. And uh, I wondered if he'd contacted you or. He knows where I live. Well, one thing I, I would like to add is that about, I don't know, 15, 18 years ago for our anniversary, I let Robin pick out a whole set of whatever she wanted for uh, uh, dinner plates and side plates. And it was probably one of the, her, her favorite anniversary presents she's ever got. And Kurt's done some really cool specialty tiles for me and one of his amazing fish uh, uh, platters. Uh, uh, they uh, are real special to us. I want a fish platter. <laughs> <laughs> then don't get your haircut, Samson. <laughs> you know, Kurt has really helped us out a few times when we've needed gifts and we did, just didn't know where to go or what to get. For example, when Chelsea was a Rotary Exchange student over in Austria, we went to visit her and we needed something for her host family. And we brought a couple of Kirk's pieces and they were genuinely thrilled, you know, to receive those as gifts. And so, you know, anytime any of you are just stuck for a gift, he's a great resource. Yeah. Thanks for the infomercial. <laughs> yeah. I like those little half um, shell things that sit on the shelf. Those are, those are really cool. They'd be a great gift. So yeah, I definitely need to come shopping. I'll go with you too, Yola and Vicki. Okay, good deal. Maybe we'll rent a man. I need support. And I know that if Kurt, if he served wine, he'd probably make more money. <laughs> I've had wine there before. Sometimes he does only for his special people. <laughs> and that would be all of us. For the rest that would of, be us. All of us. That is danger in waiting. I am worried. All right, very good. Thank you so much, Kurt. Great presentation and uh, everybody have a great weekend. Thank you, Kurt, loved it.